Cursor, at least in my mind, feels like a significant milestone as far as editors are concerned for code. It delivered a whole new take on auto-completions, as well as multi-file edits with AI, and Cursor even started to ship some agentic features recently, including some things that allow you to create GitHub issues and the agent can pick it up from there. And yet, there are actually a couple of workloads where it struggles. Cursor, in the end, still depends on large language models provided by vendors, and languages like JavaScript and Python, those have pretty good support, but languages like Go, Rust, or Mojo, or Scala simply don't have the same productivity boost at the moment. But it's not just different languages, it's also different libraries. And that brings me to Python notebooks, and in particular, to Marimo. Jupyter use JSON files to store the notebook, but Marimo really just uses a Python file. And it does so in a very specific format. Marimo notebooks tend to have lots of functions that are decorated, and there is a certain logic to things that go into a function as well as things that go out. And that structure is important. So you could rightly wonder, how well can Cursor actually handle these files? Does it need a lot of hand-holding? Or can we do things to make the experience nice? I won't be doing a full benchmark or anything like that in this video, but my goal is to really do give everything a proper kick in the tires to see if we can learn something about steering cursor in general, but also things that we might be able to do for Marimo specifically. As we'll see later, for some code changes, cursor works pretty well out of the box, and other times you do need to steer it just a little bit. Before diving into cursor, I figured I might first introduce Marimo just a little bit to also explain what's so interesting about the file format. So what you're looking at here is a notebook. It's like Jupyter, if you've seen that before. But everything that you see here is not stored as a JSON file. I also have some interactive cells over here, but uh, all of this is stored as a Python file. And this is what the Python file looks like. Cells in this Python file are functions, but they are functions that have this special decorator attached on top. And markdown cells are still Python functions, but they tend to use this markdown function inside of it. And there's more details that I could share about these notebooks, how they work internally, etc. But the main thing that I do hope that you appreciate now is that these are unconventional Python files. So it's actually kind of a fun little challenge to see if Cursor is even able to deal with this, because it's probably something that it hasn't really seen before. And it's also something that most LLMs won't have training data on. So it's a good challenge, I think. So let's kick the tires. Uh, what I've got over here is Cursor open. And in particular, there's this chat I've opened on the side over here. And one thing I could do is I could just say, hey, make me a new Marimo file. Call it youtubedemo.py. Start with a simulation exercise about the Monty Hall problem, add some markdown cells as well. So it's off thinking now. I don't think that it matters too much, but it's good to me point out I'm just using the blank agent mode over here and the model is set to auto. And you can also see that it's starting to write. And it wrote a whole bunch. So what I'm just gonna go ahead and do is I'm just gonna hit accept on the file and let's just see if Marimo can actually open it. So Marimo edit YouTube demo.py. And that's a fail. Apparently the Marimo app definition is expected and it's not being initialized. And if I were to also have a quick look, uh, the first markdown code that is written here is not written inside of a Python function that is expected. If I zoom in some more, then I do see uh, something of a Marimo cell appear over here, but this is a pattern that I've seen a lot, not necessarily just in cursor, but also Claude. Starting a Marimo notebook from scratch is tricky for LLMs, mainly because they are so used to normal Python files. And at least that's my theory. So let's see if we can maybe fix that. Uh, one thing I could do is I could maybe add some cursor rules. So what I've now done is I've added this dot cursor rules file. Uh, for some reason it's picked up as a Python file, don't really know why. On paper, this is a file that cursor will pick up and will use when you're interacting with, uh, let's say this chat interface over here. And I've removed the old demo file and I'm basically just repeating the same command that I had before. Uh, just to see what would happen now. And if I were to look at it now, just at a first glance, it does seem to do a couple of things better. At least I can now see that we have a uh, Remo app that's being generated, and that app is now also something that's being used to declare these cells. This is how Remo adds cells, by the way. You have a function, the inputs need to be declared, and then there's a decorator. One thing that it seems to have just copied along as well is in this cursor rules file, I just copied a snippet that we had in the examples folder. Uh, but it's been generated with an old version of Marimo. And it just went ahead and copied that generated with bit, uh, which isn't necessarily ideal, but I'll take it. And I guess a good next step would be to go Marimo, edit, and then YouTube demo.py. 
and we are at least able to open this, which is good. Now, the fact that I'm able to open a notebook is great, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the code that's inside of it actually runs. And it seems that I'm not even able to run uh, this bit of markdown code over here, which is interesting. But it seems to be complaining about the fact that Marimo is not defined. And if I then have a look, then I can, oh, that's interesting. I can see that Marimo definitely was defined, but apparently it created two cells with that import statement, which is something that Marimo doesn't support. So if I were to remove one, then maybe hit play. Then we do see that things seem to work. So that's definitely kind of nice. So, okay. It seems that we do have some code now that is able to run and it roughly does what we want it to do, or at least when I glance at it, it seems to be doing something with Monty Hall problem. So, you know, fair. But I do have a couple of comments on presentation because right now it really just seems to be printing all sorts of outputs and it's not really using the interactive elements that Marimo offers. So, you know, not necessarily bad, but it's definitely also not the best that it perhaps could be. So as a next step, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see if Cursor is able to make some changes that I like. But what I'm also gonna do is I'm just gonna restart the notebook. And the main reason for it is that I wanna add this one uh, watch flag. By adding this watch flag over here, I'm gonna be able to make changes and then see things live update in the browser as well. So that lends itself quite nicely for these terminal-based agents, but also for these agents that live in a sidebar like this. So uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and run this. And then I'm gonna go back uh, to over here and I could say things like, uh, use the Marimo features a bit more. I prefer mark down output over print statements, add a slider or two for the simulation as well. Let's see how well it does this. Okay, so I've got these two windows open, right? I've got my browser on the left and I've got cursor on the right. What I can now do is hit accept over here. And in my experience, only when I hit accept here, that's when the change can actually go ahead and propagate. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit accept. And I guess I gotta refresh this. Oh no. Unfortunately, we have a bug. It seems that cursor made a mistake that I am now going to have to manually inspect in order to fix it. And I think I even found the issue. It's this bit over here. So let's just, Remove that one return statement, see what happens, hit save. I guess I gotta rerun this. Yep, there we go. Okay, so so yeah, that, that was interesting because it turned out to be kind of a Marimo specific thing. A function like this inside of Marimo that contains a cell, you have to be very conscious about what it returns. And it's looking like Cursor was just a little bit confused on what to do there. So it was basically trying to figure out a way to maybe not do the stuff down below here given a certain predicate. So okay. It, Again, I need to do some manual intervention. But if I were to properly restart, and if I were to now have a look, then, you know, in a few places, I can definitely see that it's using the markdown stuff a bit more, but it's also making a few little mistakes. Like, if you're gonna use a slider in Marimo, uh, you have to use that from the UI submodule. It's also kind of hallucinating some of these inputs. At this point, I think it's safe to say that the experience isn't that great. But we should maybe also take a step back and consider that Cursor can do way more than just that agentic workflow that we saw in the sidebar. In general, the thing that I know Cursor for, or the thing that it typically excels at, is the ability to ask questions about your code base and the ability to do clever things without a completion. So maybe instead of trying to generate the whole notebook in one go, one thing that we could try and do instead is to see if we can leverage the auto-completion just a bit more. So I'm gonna uh, go ahead and close off the sidebar over here. What I've also done is I've removed a whole bunch of cells. And what I have over here is definitely still in uh, watch mode. So if I were to, I don't know, uh, maybe turn this H1 markdown thing into an H3, hit save, uh, you can see the notebook live update. So I'm still able to get kind of the best of both worlds, especially if you've got a screen that's a little bit wider than the thing that I'm recording on right now. So, okay, there, there's an introduction about the Monty Hall problem, so that's pretty good. And what I could maybe do, let me just zoom in just a little bit here, is do something like app.cell, and then do something like def, and let's say something like uh, import numpy and polars to, Start a simulation, enter. Okay, I can go ahead and accept. And what I could maybe also do is hit return here and notice that it is now able to pick up that NumPy and Polars are indeed outputs of this one cell. So I can hit tap complete there. Uh, one thing I should do is just actually tap that whole bit. Uh, but notice how actually 
Cursor was clever enough to understand that I have to return a tuple over here. And if I were now to look at the notebook down below, I am definitely importing uh, those two libraries. So that's good. I can also hit play here. Uh, notice, by the way, this is kind of a nice little two-way street. So if you still want to use the auto completion from cursor, you can definitely go back into this editor. But if you feel like working from uh, Marimo, you can also do that. And if I were to make a little change here and hit save, then this view also updates. And notice in this particular case, I see another auto completion prompt. So it seems to understand that maybe you want to play a game here. So, okay, let's see what it does more. Not bad. Revealing a goat. Something with remaining doors. A car position. Yeah, okay. And uh, it's going to try to see if it can show me a bar chart. Okay, let's let's see how this works. And this is the moment where it's also starting to seep through the cracks a little bit. So let's hit save here instead. It's not returning anything just yet. Let me just see if I can refresh this. Maybe hit restart and maybe hit restart. Okay, and then it does work. Uh, something about state in the middle got a little bit mixed up there, but um, it does seem like it is doing the Monty Hall problem proper here, so that's good. At this point, I do want to give compliments where compliments are due. So even though you do notice that there are a few hiccups, the fact that Cursor is able to detect that, oh, sometimes we've got to do a tab completion where we return some of the things that are being emitted in the cell, that is definitely nice. But at the same time, it also feels safe to say that a notebook environment is just a little bit different from what you might typically do with Cursor, which is typically a web app or something like that. Having said that, I do think there's one path that you can use Cursor for together with Marimo uh, that is really solid, and that involves just making a helper file instead. Let's make a new Python file. I'm going to call this helper.py. And let's just say, write a function that can do the Monty Hall simulation. I think that's enough info. And there we go. The function just got generated. It looks pretty good. And what I could now maybe do is just hit save over here, go back to my Marimo notebook. And let's do something like from helpers or from helper import. Uh, what did I call this thing? Monty Hall simulation. There we go. And maybe I could do something fancy here. Maybe start a slider on top and maybe do something with the number of games that I'm playing here. Let's have that be determined by the value of the slider. Let's do switch is equal to true, and let's maybe, so that's output one. Let's now also add output two, right? And then I can compare output one with output two. Hit run on this one, and if I increase the sliders over here, then I can see the numbers updates. Let's do switch equal to false here, by the way. And okay, this is uh, maybe a little bit closer to home, but maybe this is also the pattern, I think. So cursor in the end is a tool that's really good at changing static Python files. And the thing with the notebook is that things are just a little bit more dynamic. You have data frames, and how is Cursor going to understand all the different columns inside of that data frame that you've got, especially if it's like an intermediate result? So if you find yourself in the need of a LLM kind of a workflow from a notebook, do know that those are just available inside of Marimo, and that use case is definitely valid. We can hook you up with all sorts of different LLM providers like Kimi K2, that's one that I've been using a lot lately. But then if you still want to use tools like Cursor, Maybe the best way to think about that is to see Cursor as a very nice tool to generate helper files. And with that one final comment, by the way, one thing that I can do is I can say something like, hey, on module change, uh, let's just auto run. And that means that if I were ever to make a change to this file over here, so let's just remove the doc string, right? That's something I could do. When I hit save now, and let's maybe make another change again. And, and note, we do have to pay attention to the numbers on the left-hand side, but if I hit save now, then if you paid attention, you are gonna see that these numbers change every time that I uh, save the file. So uh, let's once again hit save, numbers update, right? So that's also a very nice workflow. Using tools like Cursor to maybe change your helper functions inside of this one separate file and use that inside of a notebook, that I think is probably the most productive way to use a tool like Cursor together with Marino. And quite honestly, the experience is pretty nice too. If you're a Cursor user, I highly recommend considering uh, this flow. It's great.